Alright, hey everybody, it is Daniel the Rocket Noob, and I have decided that I am going to do some model rocket build videos. Um, I've got a lot of stuff on the build pile right now. A lot of them are Estes rockets. In fact, most of the rockets I've built have probably been Estes rockets. Um, but I decided to try something different, uh, and this was near the top of the pile. It is uh, by Quest Aerospace. It's called the Superbird. Uh, it's a payload carrying rocket. It's about 31 inches tall, 31 and a quarter inches tall. And uh, it's a low and slow rocket. It's supposed to lift off with a nice, slow, realistic lift off. And you can see it's a three fin rocket. Uh, it's got a nice, long body. It's supposed to be orange and white, or red and white. Um, and it is in diameter. It is about 1.378 inches, or 35 millimeters in diameter. Because this is Quest, that doesn't fit in with any of the BT uh, tube sizes, like the Estes ones. Um, so 1.378 inches is slightly larger than the BT-55, and this is a BT-55. Um, and uh, this is, you'll find this in a lot of kits, including Oh, the Goblin and uh, the Sky Commander and the Photon Probe, a lot of Estes rockets use this kit. Um, it's a really versatile, or use this uh, tube size, it's a very versatile tube size because you can make small rockets with it, big rockets with it, and it, it just, uh, it's, a, it's a nice tube size. Um, and if you look at the tube in the kit, it's almost indistinguishable. Um, and another tube size that you find more rarely in Estes kits is the BT-56. The BT-56 is only slightly larger than the BT-55 at 1.346 inches or 34.2 millimeters. So this one is almost as large as this, but putting it side by side, you can't, you can't really tell the difference. You can't even really tell the difference between these guys, except if you try to couple them together, uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, it, it won't, will not go. All right, so I'm going to start with the unpackaging. You can see we got the package there. Um, I've had this one for a while. I thought it was out of production, but uh, I recently checked the Quest website and it's still available. It's only 17 bucks, uh, so it's a nice looking rocket. Uh, let's open her on up. Not really a good place to do this without cutting into. There we go. stapled on? No, it is not. Okay. So we're going to take off the face card. Looks like the, oh, the face card is, we got the NAR safety code right there. So let's check out the parts. First of all, we got the body tube. Uh, now this tube is, as I said, slightly larger than this one, but I'm going to couple these together. Yep, it definitely is. Uh, sometimes I've noticed with certain quest kits, the size that the uh, instructions say the tube is, is uh, actually slightly smaller than what, uh, or, or slightly larger than what they, uh, they, they, did, they say that it is. Um, and sometimes you have to watch out for that when you're building certain kits. Uh, if that turns out to be the case here, we'll, we'll talk about that. All right, so then we've got this, um, <clears throat> this what looks like a coupler that is also, uh, looks like part of a launch lug. Trying to do this around my camera. We got this nose cone. Um, this has got the classic Quest nose cone shape. There are, so, there are a lot of rockets that have this nose cone shape, but they're uh, they're a little larger. Um, it's a tangent ogive with a spherical blunt, but as you can see, there's this sort of like uh, cylindrical section here. And this is a smaller one than I've built before. I built a few Quest rockets, but this is a little smaller. And then this here is the upper body tube. It looks like um, it's already red. And I'm not really sure why uh, they make it red. Uh, maybe so that you don't have to paint it. Um, but you have to paint the bottom of the rocket if you want the fins to be the colors you want it. So what I'm probably going to do, because I, I like to fill in my tube spirals, is I'm probably going to uh, just sand a little bit of that color off, fill in the spirals, and then just repaint it. And that's probably the, what I would do. All right, so then we got our uh, <coughs> instruction sheets. And it looks like we have, yes, the tubes. We got the nose cone. Uh, we got the coupler. I think that's the, the 
is I, so that is the black tube coupler. Uh, all right, so we got some decals here. Uh, these are self-stick decals, which is a little disappointing. I actually would like water slide decals a little better than the self-sticks because the self-sticks, yeah, they just tend to stand out a little bit more and they have a bit of a ridge over them. So maybe what we'll do is put those on and top it with a clear coat and see if that, uh, you know, hides the edges. Uh, we'll see. Or maybe we'll paint it a different color altogether. Quest rockets usually come with a parachute that you have to assemble yourself. And it looks like this one comes with two parachutes. And I don't know if that is an extra parachute or if this is one of those quest rockets that is supposed to come down on two separate chutes. I guess we will find out when uh, we get to that part of the build. Um, I actually <laughs> might just use Estes uh, parachutes for this because I have a bunch of them and I'll be honest, if you've never put a parachute together yourself, it's a little bit of a pain. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, if I wanted to build my own parachutes, I could just do it out of a trash bag, but at least we have this if we want it and need it. First then we have our fins, and this looks like this is about an eighth of an inch. Might be three thirty seconds of an inch, but I think it's about more of an eighth of an inch. Let's check here. Thick. No, that looks like it's more like, yeah, that's about an eighth of an inch thick. So we've got the three fins there. All right. And then inside we have a little bag containing some smaller parts. All right, so we have our shock cord, and it's uh, like a lot of kit, Quest kits. It contains two parts, a Kevlar section and an elastic section. And these are usually tied together and uh, at, somewhere in the middle and often mounted to the motor tube, uh, which you see here, the yellow, yellow motor tube. Um, I'm not crazy about uh, these for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, they tend to be very short, and um, I don't know. I've just had, it with the, uh, the shortness of the, the shock cord and the elastic, you tend to get a little bit of snapback. So what I'll probably do is substitute something. You could substitute a long piece of sewing elastic and do an Estes-style, what they call teabag mount. Um, but probably what I'm going to do is use a long bit of Kevlar kite string, I got this from a website called emmakites.com. Uh, this, unlike the Kevlar you often get with uh, model rocket kits, which is a twisted and doesn't have any give to it, this is braided, and so it, it's a little more flexible. It's easier to pack into the rocket. It's um, flame retardant, and it is surprisingly lightweight. Um, a nice good length of this is lighter than the typical rubber band you get with a lot of Estes kits. All right. <coughs> so. Then we have our motor tube, our yellow motor tube. Now these Quest motor tubes um, tend to be a little weak and they're pretty easy to crush. Uh, when I taught model rocket camp and we built our Quest rockets, um, a lot of times the kids had trouble getting things glued together without just, just crushing the heck out of these things. And as you can see, it's already kind of distorted there. So I'm probably gonna swap out a piece of uh, BT-50 Sorry, BT20, which is the, the right size for a, an 18 millimeter motor, a B or C motor that'll fly with this thing. And, uh, and I got that from johnrocket.com. Of course, then we got the thrust ring. That's gonna go in there and keep the motor from shooting up out the top of the rocket. Uh, we have a motor hook. It's very similar to an Estes motor hook. It's got that thumb tab, and I'm probably gonna just cut that right off because I'm not too crazy about those things. A uh, couple of centering rings, which we definitely need. A uh, rocket of this size, I would often um, upgrade the motor to a uh, D-sized motor, a 24 millimeter motor mount. Um, but with a tube size, an unusual tube size like this, I would probably have to cut my own centering rings, and I find that a little difficult, so I'm probably not going to do that. Probably just keep this a nice low and slow rocket with uh, the two centering rings here. And then we have... The bottom of, I'm guessing, this goes onto the bottom of the coupler, and there's your your uh, your payload section there. It is open, um, so it's got uh, it's got an open spot right there, and that looks like where the chute or the shock cord attaches. Um, if you wanted to fly something like an altimeter, 
in this, it would probably be a good idea to put something there to cover this up uh, so that the ejection charges from uh, the rocket don't, from the rocket motor, don't uh, mess up your altimeter. So we'll probably do that. And then, we'll, we, then we have a, finally, the launch lug. Um, and I imagine when you couple this in here, the lug, the lug obviously gets glued to the rocket and the coupler, you probably line up the coupler with, whoops, I don't want to get that stuck there, with the launch lug to add a second sort of luggy kind of area. All right, so that is the unboxing. Um, and uh, I guess that's it for now. Uh, once I get around to actually building this thing, we will shoot that. Thank you.